Hi everyone, my name is Nitya and you are at my Floss Tube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. This is a channel all about cross stitch and it's the end of February and I'm just checking in to show you what I've been stitching on this month. If you're uh, returning to my channel, welcome. Welcome back. It's so nice to see you. I love these check-ins and uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome to you as well and I hope you find something that you like. Um, nothing much to report in terms of updates you know, life-wise, it's just been a very busy work month. That's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> so, um, I think we're just going to get into the stitching, because I actually have a finish to show you right off the bat. So, um, a few, but believe it or not, a couple of finishes. So, um, let's do that. So, my first finish is um, Half the Fun by Ink Circles. You've probably seen this one floating around. It's kind of a tribute to... Uh, transportation. So it's got all these different modes of transit all over. Now I stitched this on a 40 count felled spar by Picture This Plus. I really love this fabric. I would definitely use it again. It's, um, you can kind of, when you look at it closely, you can see sort of that it's on a white linen, but it's really heavily modeled with beige and blue. I, I really love it. It's so, so pretty. I think it could almost work for like a <clears throat> like a beachy themed um, stitch would be pretty for that too. It is kind of like a cloudy um, sand and clouds sort of texture to it, color and texture. The floss is DMC color variations. It's 4240 and uh, I didn't pay any attention to how I variegated it or anything like that. I just kind of stitched it, you know, whatever color I started with, I just kind of started with it some, mod some uh, variegation in there, but not intentional variegation. So this was tricky <laughs> to stitch. I basically, um, well, first of all, let's back it up. I decided to finish. I was really close to finishing it. I had less than like a quarter of it left, just a little corner. And um, Nati, who goes by Stitchy Nati on uh, Instagram, started a sale for her birthday weekend, this weekend. And, um, so it was a, what's the sale? Small win sale. So anything you have like really close to finishing or like a small start that you want to try to start and finish, just something to have a small win. So I really liked, liked that idea. And I thought, yes, I, I'm definitely going to pick this up and finish it. it. I, my track record of errors on this is like a hundred percent. Like every time I picked this up to stitch on it, I made a mistake and I had to frog like between 50 to 100 stitches every single time. So I think that's why I just never kept picking it up because I knew it was like, oh, dreading some kind of miscount. And it's totally my fault. I mean, Ink Circle's patterns are always very intricate. This one was my fault because I tried to do it from the pattern without making a working copy. I usually make a working copy and highlight as I go along. And I didn't on this and what a nightmare. And I never even learned from my lesson. <laughs> I just kept making the same mistakes over and over again. Like that, this train motif, like all four trains going all the way around, I made mistakes. I had to pull out all of those every time I tried stitching those. Don't make things easy for myself, do I? But um, I'm liking the end effect, and I'm glad to have an old whip that's done. So thanks, Nati. That was a great idea and uh, good encouragement to take something off my whips list. So that again was, uh, it's called Half the Fun. I think it's because it's like a really small sized, um, it's less than a hundred by hundred. Uh, I think that's what the half is referring to in the pattern. <clears throat> and it's by Ink Circles. Okay. Um, I have a like sort of finish <laughs> to show you. I haven't woven in the end. This is a crochet one. I'm going to squeeze in a crochet finish. I haven't woven in the ends, so I've just tucked them in on the inside. But I made this cowl, and it's really cozy. It's using a bulky yarn, which I love. This yarn is from Treehouse Knits. It's a merino wool, and the colorway is called Serendipity. Isn't it so pretty? 
all these pretty kind of like tealy I love teals these sort of tealy blues and these dark these are like all my favorite colors here these um like clay tones these dark orangey brown and clay tones I love all of that so um it's just a crochet it's a crochet bean stitch and I'll put the name of that I um, used a video video tutorial on YouTube not remembering the name of the person right now, but I'll put the info, this info and every, you know, as usual, all the info on like what patterns I'm using and everything I'll put in the description below. So this was super easy, just like a less than a half day, a few hours to do. Really easy. It worked up fast. I had to use two skeins of a bulky yarn to do it. So it's so warm and cozy, even though it's starting to get warmer now, I'll have less and less chance to wear it. But I wear these cowls when I like run errands around the neighborhood. I just throw one on, so I really like having them around. Although this one's really pretty, I should probably like wear it out or something, but I don't go out too often, so there's that. Um, it's a bean stitch and crochet. I'll show you up real close. So it's just like um, multiple yarn overs that go into each stitch so you have these like little bunches, these little bundles that show up. So it creates like a really nice texture and then um, it's super cozy. It makes for like a, it's a bulky yarn already and just makes it like a little bit thicker. So it's really nice warm, like for something warm, it's a really nice stitch to do. Okay, um, I have another finish to show you. So this one is from the Let's Make a Statement series that D Dee at D's 20 Stitches just started this month. And um, so this is the first in the series. I'm not sure how many there will be. I think it's, it's, it's just a budding idea right now, I think. Um, and I love it. This was just a weekend stitch. And I don't have it. The called for thread for it is a... Brin and Needle, I think, um, variegated floss, a beautiful blue and pink variegated floss, which I didn't have. I used DMC, let me look it up, I have it written down which color these colors these are. The blue is 3844 and the pink is 602. So these were just DMC in my stash, but what I did is I looked at the model stitch that used the variegated thread and I tried to put the pink into the spots where that variegation happened and then try to put the blue into the spots where the blue parts of thread were. I know D, I think they mentioned in the pattern that they were kind of intentional with doing, creating this kind of splotchy, splotchiness here. So I tried to mi mimic that using only solid colors. And then there are more colors in the pattern, but I just went with um, DMC310, my friend, DMC310, which I just love. This actually made me wonder if I should... Um, get myself a cone, a cone of 310, because I really find myself going to it quite a bit. I don't know if I would ever stitch anything enough, you know, large enough to need that, but uh, this is on a Picture This Plus. The color is called Heroic, and it's perfect for stitching anything related to trans rights because it's got pink and blue splotches on it, um, colors of the trans flag, trans pride flag. And this um, fabric, this piece of fabric was a gift from Alicia, who is Resist Stitch on Instagram. Beautiful, has some beautiful stitching to, to show. And um, last year, Alicia sent me a bundle of Picture This Plus fabrics that she wasn't using. So I'm finally, Alicia, I'm finally using one. And it's going to a really good cause, too. So I'm so happy to be using it. And I think my idea for this, this is meant to be a series of... Um, <clears throat> like it's going to make a bunting basically it's small banners and uh, if you know me you know I'm not that crafty when it comes to sewing my finishes so what I thought I might do is try to stitch all of the parts of the series or multiple parts of the series on the same fabric since there's more room and then like I could there's one here right I could fit one more in the middle one more at the bottom and then I could even turn some sideways and do like half here and half next to it or half here and like half here and just make it kind of a big collage of all of the different banner patterns. And then maybe I can ask somebody or I can give it to my um, LNS or try to find somebody who can sew it into a projects bag for me. I could do something like that or just hang it like that too. That's the plan. I think this is a... Oh... I have a tag on this. 
This is a 14 count Ada, which I don't normally use, um, but the colors were just so perfect on it. So I have had to use three strand. No, did I? On the pink and blue, I used two strands of DMC and it actually worked out okay. You can see a little bit of the fabric through, but because um, <clears throat> it's not super dark, the pink and neither the pink nor the blue is super, super dark. You can't really tell where the fabric is poking through. Now on the DMC 310, I had to use three strands because even with the three strands, you can kind of see fabric poking out behind there. So, um, I loved stitching on that and I, I think it looks amazing and the message is super important too. So, um, anything we can do to make this world a safer space for our trans friends, let's keep doing that. Um, this is, oh, I'm a little wishy-washy today. Can you tell I'm getting over a cold? My head's kind of a little bit in the clouds. <laughs> so I'm moving at a slower pace than normal today. Um, I'm going to count this as a finish. It's a partial finish. So I told you that I was working on Rabbit Roundel by The Work Basket last month. And it's actually part of two roundels that I'm putting on the same space, on the same piece of fabric. So Rabbit Roundel is done. Finish that one up. It didn't take once. So the um, conundrum I was in was that I couldn't find my thread for this. I only had like half a day's worth of stitching left and I couldn't find the thread. Well, I had never ordered it. I thought I had ordered a spare skein or a spare um, spool. It's a sulky. Sulky, I think it's 4061. It's poppy is the color. I had never ordered it. I had just put it in the wish list on Sulky's website. So I got that sorted out. I ordered it and then I ordered a spare. This is going to be Swan Roundel over here. They're going to be facing each other, the Swan and the Rabbit. Um, so I have my spare already of this one because I know I'll run out of that one as well. So this, um, I'm not remembering what this color is, but let me know if you want to know what this is. I can look it up and put it in the comments. I'm real happy with this rabbit roundel and I think you are too because I posted it on Instagram and I've gotten more likes on this than like anything I've ever <laughs> stitched before. So this seems to be a crowd pleaser and a fan favorite. This is on 18 count mystic by picture this plus and the sulky has perfect coverage. Just one strand of sulky. It's a really thick strand. I think it works perfectly on, on this fabric and this is really funny. Um, I have the lights on, so you're not going to be able to see. I'll try to put a picture in, but this fabric and thread combination looks totally different when the lights are off. Um, like I, where I stitch in the living room and where we spend most of our time in the living room, it, the lighting is very dim in there and there's not a lot of natural light in that space. So a lot of my cross stitch that I have on the wall does tend to look really different. It has a totally different look to it when it doesn't have the light shining on it. So I'll put a picture up to show you what this looks like. It looks totally different. Like this fabric looks almost like a charcoal gray and um, the reds and pinks really stand out differently too. So I think it's cool that it has kind of different effects, you know, in different lighting. So I really love this. I really like patterns by the work basket too. I have a few in my stash and those will be fun to work on. So, um, Part of my, like how I'm choosing the pieces I work on this year is related to a sal that I made up called the Cued Up Sal. And so I'm choosing whips that I want to work on based on projects that I have queued up and I eventually want to start. So I try to find some kind of link, either they're by the same designer or they have like a common theme, um, something like that, or common like type of stitching or something. And I tell myself, okay, you finish this whip first, and then you get to do that one, the one that you have queued up. So this one I have two pieces queued up, and I can now stitch on one of them. I needed to finish this rabbit roundel before I could start Shimanchu Rabbit by Tarsier Stitches. So that'll be, I get to start that in March. And then if I finish the whole piece, Swan Roundel included, then I am going to start on um, City Box Beatrix Potter Sale with... Uh, Julie, Kansas City girl, and a whole bunch, I think a lot of people are stitching on this now. So I'm getting super excited. I found my, um, I have a Little Bunny um, Ada by XJU Design. Uh, there's a color called Li Little Bunny. It's like a very, very pale gray, like almost not even gray. Um, 
that I'm going to use it. And then like a bright brown. I think it's DMC 975 that I've kind of been looking at. It's like a golden brown. So I, I already kind of have my colors going. I'm super excited. So maybe I'll try to go for a finish on Swan Roundel this month so I can get started on both my rabbit um, pieces that I have queued up. Okay, so that's been kind of exciting for... Uh, oh, here's the full picture. Swan Roundel, in case you're curious. Isn't that fun? I love all these, like, I love that border and these, like, pretty paisley kind of things. The heart is going to be down here on the swan, and I don't know if you noticed, the heart is up here on the rabbit, and then they're going to be facing, facing each other, too. I think it's going to be cute. Um, I was saying something. What was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Anyway, um, I have a whole bunch of whips to show you, more whips to show you, so... Let me just make sure I have all that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so shall we talk about some whips? I have some cool stuff to show you. So the first one I'm stitching, <clears throat> I made some really good progress on this this month. I don't know if I can keep it from rolling up. I'll try. This is Birds from Bernard's Books. It's by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I think the last time you saw it, I had done, this had already been done, and a little bit of this on top. So I brought both of these sides down. I got kind of worried because <laughs> I was rethinking my measurements and I thought, oh great, this is like a, a, once again, getting my margins off. I thought I left too much space on the top and I thought I was going to run out of space on the bottom, but it looks like that is the bottom most point. So I'll make it. <laughs> I don't know why my, I'm so terrible at sorting my margins out. But, um, I love it. This is on, uh, is it 40 count? Yeah, this is on a 40 count truffle. Picture this plus. Everything's been picture this plus today. And um, this is DMC 221. It's very dark shell pink. And I, I love it. I think it looks really pretty. There's a good picture there. Really good. Um, like, dif depending on how you look at it, it looks different. Like, it's, it's technically pink, but it looks kind of like a dark orangey coral sometimes. Looks brown sometimes. Looks red sometimes. So I love all of that. Here's a closer look. So I've been enjoying that one and I just want to keep kind of chipping away at it. For a queued up Sal, the project that I have queued up is Mermaid's Folly, my Courtney collection. I have a huge piece of Picture This Plus Jada 18 count that I'm going to put that on and my idea is to use like a dark, dark, the darkest possible DMC teal. It's 38 something, but I don't, 3809 maybe, 3808 or 3809 or maybe 3810. Anyway, whichever of those is the darkest teal. So it's going to be kind of a color on color sort of thing I'm going to go with on that. Um, that's my idea at least. That's what I have in stash and that's what I'm going to go with. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm getting excited about my pieces that I have queued up because I feel like I'm making progress on my whips, but I do want to finish this one first. The um, connection between the two is that Mermaid's Folly is kind of a, a negative stitching piece a little bit. You, like you stitch um, around the figures in the in the um, pattern. So then I thought, okay, well let me finish another negative stitching piece that I have. So this is the same thing. You're stitching around all the motifs instead of stitching the motifs themselves. Although I've done my, um, I have it here, but it's under a stack of stuff. The um, Yule goats that I showed you maybe last month, I had done that um, with a white silk on pink fabric. That's a modern folk embroidery where I flipped, like stitching the negative and the non-negative. So you could do that with this pattern. If you really like this pattern but are intimidated with like all of this fill-in stitching, you could go ahead and stitch the motifs. Just get like a really interesting color fabric and let the fabric do all the interesting negative part for you. And then you could stitch just the motif bits. And that would, I think it might even be quicker. Because you wouldn't, like, see all this stuff that I filled in. You would instead be stitching, like, this vine. Which is a lot less stitching. So, if you like the look of the pattern, you know, you could do the opposite. Stitch the opposite. I think a lot of people did that on the um, Fruits of Plenty pattern, too. The Modern Folk Embroidery Sal from 2021. Because I know that has, like, those bands of negative stitching through it. That... I, I find that really beautiful. I'm stitching the negative stitching on that, but I know a lot of people stitched like the motifs and that looks really pretty too. 
So definitely an option if you like that kind of stitching and <clears throat> it feels overwhelming to do that, you know? Um, okay, what's next? I showed you Swan Roundel and Rabbit Roundel. Oh, I have something to show you that I wasn't expecting to work on. Um, okay, so it's where, you haven't seen this since 2021, which is when I last worked on it. <laughs> it's been ages. This is Where Flowers Bloom. It's a Hands Across the Sea samplers. And if you know me, you know that I, um, I find that I have to put a lot of thought into historic stitching when it comes to historic stitching. I don't usually stitch a lot of like reproduction samplers because I, they just don't personally, I don't personally connect with them. And then the more you learn about history, you just, it feels weird to me stitching on something historic that represents a place in a time that didn't include everybody. You know, it didn't make space for everyone. So um, that's just me. If you love stitching samplers, that's great. There are beautiful samplers out there. I love like flower and bird motifs from samplers. I think they're really pretty. Um, I'm just not usually drawn to them. However, this one was the colors on this were just so pretty. And also the message where flowers bloom, so does hope. I love things about hope, <laughs> like up, thinking about possibilities and being open to things going well eventually. So um, I decided, well, how can I make this more relevant to me? How could it, how could I make up for maybe, you know, the thing about stitching historical samplers is that not everybody's represented, right? Not everybody was able to stitch them at the times when they were being stitched in the time, at the times and in the places. So when I did this one, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool to put some names on there that maybe um, wouldn't have normally been on samplers and that are also personally relevant to me so that in the end the sampler is something I can hang on my wall and um, you know be really proud of and in, find it like inspiring to me too especially with the message of hope so what I've done with it here's what I've got I've worked on this a lot this month <laughs> I put a lot of work into it I think I can finish it next month so you will notice <clears throat> There's this really pretty border. There's some little flowered and bird motifs in here. You'll notice what's missing is the house because I really don't like stitching houses. So instead what I'm doing is I'm choosing names of people who give me hope since the message is about hope and I'm stitching their names in those spaces. So I think the last time you had seen this way back in 2021, I had Michelle's name on there. Michelle Obama was there. I've added Stacey Abrams. I need to finish her name out, but um, Miss Major Griffin Gracie is on here. She's a trans woman and um, does a lot for trans activism. Trans activism, especially related to um, like trans folks who are incarcerated and who need extra support. And um, Miss Major was at um, Stonewall too and has a lot to say about the role of trans people in Stonewall. Um, Deb Holland is here. Deb Holland is a member of, of Congress in the U.S. Um, and a native indigenous woman. And she's going on tour. Um, I think she already started. She's hearing stories of survivors of the indigenous um, residential schools. So she's giving a lot of voice to people who are victims of that horrible part of our history. Um, I haven't finished her name here, but this is Arundhati Roy, who is a, um, an Indian writer and activist. She's awesome. I don't know a lot about India. My, my heritage is Indian, but it's my parent. India is my parents' country. It's not my country. That's my country is the U S I was born and raised here. I don't know much about India. I've never had to live there. Actually, my partner, Steve technically has traveled more in India than I have. He did a backpacking tour like for months. There. So he knows a lot more about the history and geography and places and monuments than I do. Um, so I kind of turn to people who I trust to give me information about India because I'm curious about it. It's my heritage. And um, Arundhati Roy is a really great writer, but I also really love, she's a fascinating and such an inspiring person to listen to. She gives great interviews. She does like podcast interviews and um, she's very much like a person of the people. She's always involved in activism projects. And I love um, learning about India through her, through her eyes. So I, she's definitely an inspirational person. And then um, I'm almost at the bottom. I'm going to put in one more name right here. 
and that's reserved for Tracy Ellis Ross, who's an American actress. And um, I'm putting her on there because she, like me, is child-free by choice. I don't really share, I don't really share that a lot um, or say much about it for lots of reasons. But the biggest reason is because I know that there are a lot of people who are struggling to have kids who really, really want to have kids and who are struggling. So I don't want to kind of flippantly bring up that I'm child-free by choice because that, I don't want to say something that's insensitive to that pain and struggle that they're going through. But also I don't talk about it usually because I find that it makes people awkward, <laughs> feel awkward. It's like they don't know what to say. And um, I've had a lot of people say like insensitive things <laughs> or hurtful things about it just because they don't understand what it means to have that choice and make that choice. So I'm putting Tracy Ellis, I'm, and I bring this up only to give you context as to why I'm putting Tracy Ellis Ross's name on here. I really, am, it's not an invitation to say anything more about it, but um, she is child-free by choice, and she speaks up a lot about it, and I, I find myself turning to her words, to her um, interviews and speeches she's given before about it, just in moments where I feel like I need, like a commute, like I need a, to hear from someone from that community. When you're doing anything that kind of <clears throat> goes against the norm and there's not much support for it, you got to kind of reach out for familiar voices and faces to um, help, you know, help process what you're thinking and how people are reacting to you. So she's a very influential person. I, I've, for many years now, I've gone back to her words. She's a wonderful um, actress, but she's also, a, she's got a wonderful way with words. She process, she's, and she's very open about sharing anything about her body and her age. Um, yeah, I love, I love reading her words. So she's going to have the last space right here. And, uh, I think that will close out those names. I had a kind of a list of names. I, I intentionally wanted to choose BIPOC, um, people. And, um, I'm, <laughs> this has kind of quickly become a very, precious project to me because now I'm just picturing having this up on my wall and anytime I walk by we've got these fantastic voices now that are up. I'm always going to be reminded of these powerful women so very excited about where this project has gone and um I will say one thing though this is not I, I think it's great I love the idea of adapting samplers and making them relevant to who we are today and what we believe in today like um Ellen maximum cross stitch power hour I'm not someone who uses strong language myself but I really appreciate it the like emotion behind it and so I know she'll stitch like a, a traditional sampler and then put like really strong language in it I love that I'm drawn to that I kind of want to stitch one too I just think it like modernizes it and expresses something unexpected and um, I like that we can do that. I like I like doing that with samplers. It feels more me and it feels like something, you know, 50 years from now or 100 years from now, somebody who knows, who's looking back on us stitching would be like, oh, I wonder what these people were like who stitched these things. You know, it provides some insight into who we are. So I love all of that about it. Um, but what I was going to say is doing something like this. So like, how cool is it that these names are on a sampler, these names that might not have been on a sampler, a European sampler, um, you know, centuries ago, but this doesn't take the place, doing something like this doesn't take the place of supporting our um, stitchers of color in our community. So a better way to support them would be to like buy their patterns and listen to their floss tubes and feature them, amplify their voices. This is not a substitute for that. Um, want to make that clear. <laughs> this is not the best. Doing something like this is not the best way to support um, stitchers of color in our community. It's just one, you know, it's a choice I'm making, but I'm also supporting, you know, that, that bit is really important. Um, oh, <laughs> so cute up, Sal. I took this out. Um, because I've been thinking about a pattern I picked up at Keepsakes last year when I was at StitchCon. It's a Carriage House Samplings, and it's, um, what is it called? I'll put a picture up. Matter's Choice. It's Kathy Barrick. And that also is a kind of a pattern that I normally would never be drawn to. It's got a house in it. Um, you know, it's kind of more sort of prim, traditional looking. 
Um, but I was drawn to the like motifs across the top. There's kind of an interesting pattern on there. And then I was reminded of it when I was watching, I think, Abby, Abby Bella Stitch, because she did a whole series of videos last fall, like fall leading into winter. And I think that was one of the patterns she had either finished or was working on. Kind of reminded me that I had that pattern. And so I was thinking, okay, well, this is also, you know, kind of a traditional looking pattern. What can I do to, like, you know, change this up or make it something more um, representative or something more that I'd want to have? that represents what I think and what I'm interested in learning and what inspires me. So that house, I wish I had this, like I, I sorted out my sulky um, situation with figuring out what, you know, that I hadn't ordered that spool, that I needed to order that spool because I thought I'd misplaced and then I like turned my house over looking for it. And now I can't find that carriage house sampling pattern. Like I had it in my hand last week and I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, I'll have a picture up. So I was thinking, you know, what do I want to do to like ha adapt this so that it fits what I want to represent on my wall? And so, you know, it's Black History Month, so I've been learning about all sorts, just doing a lot of reading and listening. And so that house was a house that Kathy Barrick lived in in Maryland for some time. And so I started reading a little bit about Maryland history. And um, I think what I'm going to do with this piece is, is make it a tribute to a community in Black American history that's from Maryland um, called the Water's Edge or the Eastern Shore community. They're basically centered around what is today Oxford, Maryland. Um, that It sits on land that was um, belonging to the Susquehanna, Susquehanna tribe, I think is what it is. Maryland, the Maryland State Arts Council, by the way, if you ever want to <laughs> fall into a rabbit hole of research, like I did this month, the um, Maryland State Arts Council has a really great page, um, like land acknowledgement page. So they go through the entire map of Maryland, because Maryland was um, home to a lot of different uh, indigenous groups. So um, you can find, you can basically look at what county or what city um, you're interested in in Maryland, and they have like a little short history of each group that lived there. So the Susquehanna Susquehanna or Susque Susquehanna, I think, I had to check the pronunciation on that, is the tribe that lived in the place that eventually became this Water's Edge Eastern Shore community. And that area was a very tragic place in our history. It was a, one of many ports where um, ships landed, bringing enslaved peoples to our country. And um, there were, I think, reading about the history of this, there were even moments in time where like almost, it was almost 50-50, almost half the population was of African origin and half the population was colonists. And um, so this region actually has a really rich black history. There were eventually like a lot of families that settled there, um, started businesses related to kind of um, the fishing industry, because that's, that's what was around there, they were on the water. And today, there's a museum dedicated to what they're calling, like, the founding black families of this area. So I just thought that might be kind of interesting to honor because it's a house that's related to Maryland. And then there's this, like, museum, this Water's Edge Museum that has these beautiful paintings and artifacts from all these families, these black families that, that settled in that area and called it home. Um, and I think it's, from what I read, it might be one of the few museums in the U.S. that's dedicated to founding African-American families. So all of that just sounded really cool. So I think that's the direction I'm heading in, is to do more research on that and make that piece kind of a tribute to that Water's Edge Museum. Plus, I've never been to Maryland, so this just sounds like a um, it's building up to like a future travel destination, too. I'd love to go see that museum and learn more about the heritage of that area. I haven't been to a lot of places on the East Coast, so I've been to Maine and New York, basically. <laughs> That's it. And like a little bit, a blip into New Jersey, but um, that would be, I think there's a lot of history there for us to still learn, a lot of untold stories. So that's kind of the direction I'm going with that. So thanks for hearing me, hearing through my thought processes on that, but that's where I'm going. So I'm going to try to finish this in the next couple of months. And then see where that other, where the matter's choice, um, that research takes me. And we'll see what happens with that. <clears throat> if I can ever find that pattern, <laughs> whatever I did with it.
Okay, um, that is, oh, um, have you been watching Mandy, who is Clark Stitch, new floss tuber? I found out about her on Sunshine Stitchers, um, but she's a, um, stitcher of color, a brand new stitcher of color. Like, she's been stitching for a few years, but brand new floss tuber, and, um, She's doing an amazing thing. I don't know if she's going to sell these. I really hope she sells these designs eventually, but I think for right now she's doing them for the, for herself. She's making these, like, historic house patterns. So the first one is um, with a Harriet, Tub Harriet Tubman's house, I think. So it's like a little cross-stitch pattern, like, based on a photo of her home. And then she's doing one for Ida B. Wells, which I cannot wait. I really hope she sells it, or I'll just be excited to see her work on it, because Ida B. Wells is pretty huge in Chicago history, my local history here. So, um, I love the idea of stitching things like that. You know, that if I'm going to have stitching up in my house, I want it to be representative of like the time and place I'm living in. I think it's so cool. So we'll be, I'll be watching Mandy to see what she does with those patterns. That'll be exciting. But she's, she goes by Clark Stitch. It's Clark with an E. That's her daughter's name. So that's the name of her, um, floss tube channel named after her daughter. Okay, that's it for whips. I have, uh, I did start some new things. I'm going to grab those real quick and then I'll show you those. Okay, everyone. So I have three more pieces to show you and then, um, <clears throat> and then that's it. My plans are just to, I want to finish one of these whips. That's it. <laughs> those are my plans. So plans are done. Um, so I'll show you three. I have three new starts. I'm trying not to do new starts. Um, but one is a sale that I was really, actually two were sales I was really excited about. And one was a sale I've had planned since, um, since the fall. So I'm excited that I was able to start that one. Okay. So first one up, oh, did I bring them all? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> first one up, I started the Data, um, Portraits in Paris sale by Shaded Stitchery. So this is by Nori, who is Shaded Stitchery. And Nuri did a really cool thing, which is to adapt um, these very beautifully colored um, graphs created by W.E.B. E. Du Bois and um, kind of adapted the motifs from the graphs into a cross-stitch pattern. So it's like a collage of all these different graphs that were in the um, Data Portraits series, graph series. And Nuri's been doing kind of a cool thing where... Um, each month she's been posting, uh, like the actual, no, not each month, each day this month for Black History Month. She's been posting, she's, um, actually recreating her, uh, restitching her pattern, but using like cool embroidery stitches and beads and things. So there's been a motif every day and then the actual graph that that motif came from and like a little bit of explanation. So there's um, like a nice learning piece that goes along with this too. I'm really enjoying it. I like each one is so different. Each motif is so different. And I'm just using DMC from Stash. And this is leftover fabric. I have another project on the other side of this. So um, this is a um, fox and rabbit fabric. But I don't know the color. Maybe seaweed. It could be seaweed by Fox and Rabbit. It's really, whatever it is, it's really pretty. It's a nice, very dark brown and all of these colors stand out really well on it. I just don't know what the fabric is. Like even, the, it's kind of nice to have a dark color fabric where, where all tones look good on it, isn't it? Like even, the, like you could have just a black piece with DMC 310 or you could have a white or all the shades in between. I'll try to find out what this is. I want to say it's seaweed. This is one of the ones, so I, on the back of this is Metamorphosis by Ink Circles. This is the piece that I stitched on um, before I knew for, it was meant to be for Pride, but now I know better that it's better to buy from queer. Let me hold it up in a way that it's actually where you can see it. It's better to buy, um, support queer stitchers who are designing rather than to like turn things into Pride flags. Um, so I, I like what I stitched, but I just do now if I'm stitching anything that supports queer community, I'm supporting uh, designers in the community too. So is that the right way up? No, this is the right way up. 
I'll keep you posted on what this fabric is. It's a 36 count. I know for sure it's a fox and rabbit. I'm pretty sure it's seaweed, but I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll figure it out. I think part of it was that it was mislabeled when I ordered this fabric, because I remember when I was stitching on this Metamorphosis by Ink Circles, even at that time, I thought I had ordered one piece of fabric, but something else came, and then it led to confusion. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what the, what the, um, I don't remember what the two colors were, what color I had tried to order, and then what color actually came. I think one of them was seaweed, but. Anyway, so that's that. Um... Also, oh, I have a whip to show you. I'm so scattered today. I'm sorry. Thank you for hanging around through all my cloudy-headed ramblings. <laughs> I Let me show you this real quick. I stitched with my friend Priya, and we stitch on heart sampler together whenever we zoom and stitch. We try to, like, once a month. So um, this is heart sampler by Bad Vibes Only Shop. And uh, I got to the top of the tree this time around and then started this is the outer edge so this border it won't go all the way around because this whole pattern is really interesting it's got like, lots of different mishmash of motifs all over so um this order I th this border I think it ends right here but anyway I got to that border and I'm loving all of it the anatomical heart will go right here <clears throat> I started we both intended to do the heart first but it's just too hot. I can't work on that thing while zooming and talking. I I need something that's a little bit more repetitive. So, I, I mean, the tree's not super repetitive, but it's got more, like, rows in it than just, like, kind of random. There's a little bit of, like, confetti stitching and stuff in that heart, so. So I've been doing more of the borders and things like that. Priya is still working on the heart. She's working only on the heart part of it so far, so. <clears throat> this is on a um, 36 count hand-dyed by Rolanda linen and then the colors are all just like a, a mix of all different colors from my stash um, this might be dried chilies by color and cotton it's definitely color and cotton I think this might be Bing cherry by classic color works this is a silks for you um, this r bright red here is DMC 115 so it's got I just grabbed all these pinks and reds from my stash and then that's what I put into that and I, I like it so far each new motif that I add I just kind of look at what color might I, what, might I want to use and go with that <clears throat> okay I have one more new start to show you this one is very exciting because I'm um, joining Anita who's the violet stitcher and we're both stitching a dragon by Ann Stokes that was from the world of cross stitching magazine in um, January of this year issue and I had shown you the fabric this is Mabin or Mabin. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I know it's a um, hol um, pagan holiday. It's the fall pagan holiday, I think. Um, but I don't know how to pronounce it. M-A-B-O-N is the name of it. And it's got these beautiful um, like purples going into greens, going into like corally, pinky, orangey reds. And so I started it, and uh, I'll put a picture in of what the whole, the, it's the cover photo on the World of Cross Stitching January 2023 issue. And so I started it, and here's what I have so far. You're seeing a wing. So I'm doing kind of the, if you look at the picture, you'll notice kind of the dark shading matches um, the dark bits in the photo. And then I haven't filled in, I didn't have all the colors I needed for this pattern, but when I had to order my sulky for Rabbit Roundel, I went ahead and finished out ordering all my DMC I needed for this. So this is fun. We both started it um, early this month. And um, Anita stitches a lot of dragons. Beautiful, enormous full coverage dragons. So this is probably like baby stuff <laughs> compared to what she already stitches. But I'm pretty excited to start it. And um, it's really easy. <laughs> It's really easy to stitch on. So I'm happy with that. And then I am doing a queued up sell with that as well. I just started it before. I broke my rule and started it before actually finishing stuff up. But what I did is I have pulled out the two pieces I'm going to work on and try to finish them this year as well. <clears throat> I haven't done any work on these this month. I'll just show you what they are. One is um, Kesslin's Quiet Strength, which I showed you last month because I worked on it last month. I haven't done anything new on it. 
Um, I did not bring the pattern down here, so I'll put a picture in. Um, but this is kind of um, the idea for this one on Cute Up Sal was that before um, or along with working on this dragon's piece, which is kind of a small full coverage piece, I thought let me also finish another small full coverage piece that I have. So this is the one that I've got. And then um, I set up a second cute up style with that one too, because I do have, I thought I didn't have any pieces with dragons on them, but I actually do. So I want to try to finish that one as well. This is the, which year? 2018, I think. Um, Stitch Along by what used to be Linens and Threads and is now Fox and Rabbit. You know, they do their free annual Stitch Along. So um, I joined in. This was the Medieval Band Sampler one. And um, I don't think I'll, I'll be stitching all of the bands, but I really liked this one. It has dragons and like a big sun on it. And then I'll choose a couple of other, like two or three more maybe bands to, do, to um, stitch around it. But this is on a um, Zweigart, <clears throat> I don't remember what exactly, it's called like a Vintage Brown, I think, Zweigart Vintage Brown. It's a 32 count, and I'm stitching one over one on that. And so I don't know how to zoom on this thing, you might not be able to see it very, very clearly. But we've basically got, <clears throat> I really like these irises over here, we've got um, two dragon feet, two dragon wings the tail, and then the head will come in like right here. And then there are like one or two more on this side facing the other way. <clears throat> so it's going well. This is a Silks For You. No, is it? No, it's a uh, Mrs. Sadus silk. And it's either, it's either Aqua or Darling Blue. I don't remember. <laughs> I'll look it up. If you really want to know, I'll look it up. But I really like it. This There's like a subtle variegation in it. And I don't know if you're seeing like the wings of the dragon. They have sort of, I don't know, they look kind of shiny. Or they look like there's some texture to them. And it's because of that variegated thread in them. There's some like, you can see, um, there's a little bit of negative stitching back here. This is a really interesting pattern. There's negative stitching back here, which I think is meant to show the scales on the back of the dragon. They're not stitched in. Um, you stitch around them so there's just some neat stuff uh, there's some um, a couple of the bands are really pretty on this one too so I'm gonna try to keep this out and work on this as well um, since I have the other dragon started up that'll be kind of like finish this dragon too while working on that one and then I have one other new start to show you this was unexpected I'm doing a gift stitch for my friend Melanie and I have seen this pattern floating around. I've seen finishes of this pattern floating around now for a few months. And every time I look at it, I have to do a double take on Instagram when I see it. It's really cute. It's not something I would traditionally stitch, but it's perfect for my friend Melanie. So let me show you what it is. This is Little House Needleworks. It's the series. It's the Farmhouse Christmas series. And so it's a whole bunch of smalls, but I just chose four of them that I'll stitch four together. So this is one. Um... Grandma's Quilt, Baba Black Sheep, this barn, um, cock doodle doo this house, there's a little bird on it there on the fence, and then a um, rooster up top, and then um, this little red barn. And it's the barns that got me. So this is a gift for my friend Melanie because um, she's a writer, she's a wonderful, she's one of my oldest friends, wonderful person kind of like very much a kindred spirit and um she is she has a book coming out a travel book it's an Illinois travel book that's coming out she's gonna be doing a lot of events this summer related to it and um one of her favorite things to, I've mentioned it before but you might not remember one of her favorite things to do during the pandemic and you know when we were all cooped up during quarantine time she just couldn't handle being in the house so she would um well also to be fair she her mom, Melanie's mom was one of kind of the earliest people to have passed away during the pandemic. So do you remember how in the early days, like here in the U.S., like March and April, a lot of the cases of people who were dying from COVID were in nursing homes. Melanie's mom was someone who died in a nursing home. So she, it was an awful, awful time to lose someone as precious as your mom, because basically 
they had to stay quarantined so she could barely see her mom. I think she spent like <laughs> hardly any time with her before getting to say goodbye. Um, they couldn't acknowledge it with any like ceremonies or anything because they couldn't have any gatherings. So they had to wait a whole year to have a gathering. And then you're like cooped up in your house and you can't see anybody. So um, her way to cope with like all of these feelings that come with that was to go driving. She would just get in the car and go drive. And she um, basically visited, like she found all these different barns. She would just drive through all the different counties of Illinois and um, go down these like county roads, these like very isolated county roads. And just every barn she came across, she would just kind of created this like encyclopedic sort of photo collection of all these barns. And that was her hobby. So she has a really, you know, kind of a love for, for finding these old barns. And so I thought, okay, I've been seeing this pattern for ages. This is going to be perfect. A little like congratulations gift that I want to give her. So I started it and I'm kind of, I'm using a couple of the called for colors because I have them, um, but I'm going to fill in with DMC too. So I have a little bit of that red barn a little bit of the grandma's quilt right here, and then a tree from one of the other motifs down on the bottom. So see how I'm just doing the four squares all in one piece. And I they each have a little border on them, so I'm just mashing all four together. So they'll, like, this border is a shared border. So I just put the next one next to it, and they'll have that as a shared border. This is on a 32-count oatmeal by Color and Cotton, and I'm using... I think two strands. Yeah, two strands over two. So it's looking really nice. Like this barn I think is really pretty. Let me get you over a little closer. I think she'll love it. And the real challenge is that um, Melanie is a big thrift. She loves thrift stores. She's a big thrifter. So um, my challenge for this will, will be to find a frame, which I think should be easy. I'm always finding square frames at the thrift store. I want to frame it in something that's from a thrift store. I think it'll be extra meaningful to her. She loves that. She's, she's also my friend who is very concerned about waste, um, and like over consumption, but especially like waste and materials. She's my friend who will write in to like big companies all the time about their packaging, um, using plastic and packaging things. She had a, I can't remember what it was now. There was a condiment that she and her partner used. I want to say like a local mustard or something that switched from a glass to plastic. She was all over them. <laughs> she had to write in like multiple times and share. She like does her research. She'll like look up data. She'll go to their website and look up whatever data they have available on like how much money they make each year and then talk about like <laughs> use that in her letters she writes to them. So anyway, I think she'll love it. I hope she'll love it. And I want to give her just something. We usually have tea together every couple months or so. So when I see her this spring, I want to have it ready to go. Maybe I'll try to finish it next month. Um, so that when I see her, I want to, well, I'll see her a couple times before her like book events start up. So I want to give it to her before all that kicks in. Okay. <laughs> I think that's everything. I'm really hoping that when I see you around this time next month, I will have one of these projects that I've shown you finished. Something that I've shown you today, I want to have finished to show you. Maybe even two somethings if I can. Um, but this very same set of projects that I've shown you today, this is basically what I'm going to stitch from this month and try to chip away at these items. And if I feel like I need... Um, a new start to kind of, you know, the energy of a new start. I think I'm, I'm going to try to kit up, um, Shimanchu Rabbit by Tarsi, by Laura Tarsi Stitches, because I'm pretty sure I have everything I need to do that. I have some yellow, it's meant to be on yellow fabric, and then, um, she's provided some different colorways, so I'll just get that sorted out and probably work on that, but anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for hanging out with me, and, um, sitting through my cloudy moments <laughs> and uh, I hope you are um, doing well. February's rough, <laughs> emotionally a rough month. If you're like me, um, you're, you've been, it's dark out and you've been cooped up and I'm dreaming of my garden and being outside my garden. So, um, I hope, you know, you know, you're doing whatever you need to feel good. Um, do happy things for yourselves or sad or whatever, feel whatever you're feeling and then hope you're doing something to pamper yourself and hope you get a lot of stitching time too. 
and I can't wait to catch up with you in another month or so. And a lot of you commented on my last video and I still have to get back to you. Thank you for your patience on that too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.